Question 21 is the first of our written questions, uh, and it begins with a definition question. What is meant by a vector quantity? And to give an example. So a vector quantity is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. An example is velocity. We could also say acceleration, displacement, force. There are many uh, vectors that we could choose from here. Part B shows us a uh, toy locomotive on a circular track. The track has a radius of 0 0.6 uh, meters. The locomotive begins at point A and travels at a constant speed around the track, taking 20 seconds to complete it. We're asked to calculate the speed of the locomotive. Uh, for this, the speed is constant. There is no acceleration, so we don't need to use CVAT. We can use uh, speed uh, equals distance over time. And we know that the distance here is the circumference of the circle. So that is 2 pi times the radius divided by the time. So in this case, 2 pi times 0 0.6 divided by the time taken, which was 20 seconds, and that will give us 0 0.19 meters per second. Pot II shows us a displacement time graph of the locomotive compared to its uh, original position uh, at point A. We need to be able to explain the shape of that graph. Well, displacement is the straight line distance from A and because it's traveling in a circle reaching a maximum displacement half way around it is symmetrical about t equals 10 seconds at uh, t equals 0 and t equals 20 seconds the train is at point A. And part C gives us a, a separate object now placed on a smooth horizontal surface. Two forces are acting on the object. Uh, and the figure here shows the magnitude of these two forces. We've got one at 5 newtons acting 40 degrees from the horizontal to the left and uh, one at one of 7 newtons acting horizontally to the right, and we know the mass of the object is 320 grams. We need to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the object. One approach to this problem would be to draw a scale uh, vector triangle, and we could measure from that triangle the, the shape of that. I'm not going to do that, although uh, I will sketch a vector triangle. We know that uh, we have a horizontal force to the right of 7 newtons, and we know that at an angle of 40 degrees, we have another force of 5 newtons. So therefore, the resultant force is going to be acting up here, and that's our resultant force F. Now, unfortunately, we don't know the, side, the magnitude of this angle or this angle, uh, so it would be difficult for us to work this out uh, trigonometrically. However, what we can do instead is to resolve this angle here into its horizontal and vertical component. So this vector here would be equal to 5.0 sine 40 degrees. And this component here would be equal to 5.0 cos 40 degrees. Now we can resolve the diagram vertically and horizontally to find out our mystery force. So the resultant force in the y direction, in the vertical direction, 
is equal to 5.0 sine 40 degrees because that is the only force acting vertically. And if we resolve horizontally, we will find that the resultant force in the x direction is equal to the difference between 7 newtons and 5.0 cos 40 newtons. which comes out as 3.17 newtons, whereas Fy 5 times sine 40 is 3.21 newtons. So now we have a force which we know to be acting with 3.21 newtons upwards and 3.17 newtons to the right horizontally. We now need to find the resultant of that of those two components to work out what the actual force F is. So that we can do that with, with Pythagoras. So F is equal to the square root of 3.17 squared plus 3.21 squared which comes out as 4.51 newtons. Now the question wants us to find the acceleration, so for that we can use F equals MA, or A equals F divided by M, where F is 4.51, and the mass is 0 0.320, it must be in kilograms, giving us an acceleration of 14.1 metres per second squared, which is our final answer. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.